Uh, friends, yesterday I have discussed in detail the procedures of classification into two populations. Uh, we have given a general framework, uh, one is called uh, the Bayesian framework and then the other procedure I called as a minimax uh, method of procedures. And uh, what we have done is we have assumed uh, the probability distribution say p 1 x and p 2 x for the two populations and uh, we have given that if we know in advance that uh, proportion of the two population that means how many observations actually belong to the first population and how many to the second that means we can assign a priori probabilities say q 1 q 2 then we can develop a base procedure that means which will minimize the expected probability of misclassification. Um, uh, we also gave the concept of admissible procedure, minimax procedure etcetera and in particular we proved that every base procedure is admissible and every admissible procedure is base and therefore, the class of all the base procedures is a minimal complete class. In particular a member of the class of base rules will be a minimax procedure. Uh, therefore, for all practical purposes we can restrict attention to the rules which are of the Bayesian form and uh, the form is also of a very uh, nice nature that we got that say p 1 x by p 2 x is greater than something or p 1 x by p 2 x is less than something. So, then you classify in the population pi 1 or pi 2. So, now this gives a general framework for preparing classification rules for various problems. Now, the problem of classification initially started with the discussion on the normal distribution. So, we firstly discuss the procedures for that. So, classification procedures for two multivariate normal populations. Let me state the problem first. So, uh, we have say population pi 1, it is specified by say p dimensional normal distribution with mean vector say mu 1 and variance covariance matrix say sigma and say pi 2 where it is a p dimensional multivariate normal distribution with main vector mu 2 and sigma. Uh, it is like this uh, you can think of uh, for example, there is a patient a patient goes to a um, say medical uh, practitioner and uh, a certain tests are conducted on the certain measurements. So, it could be blood test and it could be say certain other measurements on the patient and uh, then it has to be decided. For example, the first population may correspond to a particular disease and the second population parameters may correspond to another disease. So, on the basis of the observations on the patient that is x, we are having say x is equal to x 1 x 2 x p, we have to decide whether they are matching more with pi 1 or more with pi 2. So, this is a classical example, uh, we can think of uh, in uh, other areas also like uh, land classification or uh, classification on the basis of economic characteristics of a uh, country or individual or an organization. So, these are the problems where we can model according to the multivariate normal distribution. That means, different characteristics, different components will be individually normally distributed and at the same time uh, the correlated structure is giving you a multivariate normal distribution. Now, in the first model I am starting with the covariance matrix to be the common. So, here we specify like this uh, mu 1 is actually your vector. So, let me write it in the form of row vector. So, this is mu 1 1, mu 1 2 and so on, mu 1 p and similarly your mu 2 vector is mu 2 1, mu 2 2 and so on, 
म्यू टू पी सो द फॉर्म ऑफ द वी एज्यूम दैट सिग्मा इज पॉजिटिव डेफिनेट If we assume sigma is positive definite, so the density functions can be written. The form of the PDF of pi i is so. Let us say p i x mu i sigma. That is one by two pi to the power p by two. Determinant of sigma to the power half. Then we have. In the exponent minus one by two x minus mu i prime sigma inverse x minus mu i for i is equal to one two. Let me call it equation number one. If we want to classify according to the rules that we uh, discussed yesterday, then the base rules are the min max rule so the class is the class of all admissible rules is of the form that is p1 x by p2 x say greater than say greater than k or less than or equal to k for classifying into first population or in the second population of course when a priori probabilities are known then exactly the form of k is Known to us, that is q1 by q2 kind of thing. But even if it is not known, then it is base rule with respect to some prior. Okay, so so that means the desirable rules are of this form only. If the prior probabilities are given, we can choose the corresponding base rule in that class. If that is not there, then we can choose any rule, or we can choose the minimax choice. So, but the framework is given that means we can always consider rules of this nature so let us consider the region of classification into pi 1 that is we call it uh, r1 that is the p1 x By p two x is greater than or equal to k, where k has to be chosen in a suitable fashion. So, if we substitute here p one x and p two x here, then this term will get cancelled out. and here we will be left with e to the power let me write down the expression uh, see in the numerator we are writing p1 so here it will become mu1 and in the denominator we have mu2 so it will come in the uh, mu2 here so if i write the ratio here so it will become something like this x minus mu 2 prime sigma inverse x minus mu 2 minus x minus mu 1 prime sigma inverse x minus uh, this is i have noted here and uh, you are getting e to the power half of this greater than or equal to k so if i take logarithmic here and i arrange the term so this will become half x minus mu2 prime sigma inverse x minus mu2 Minus x minus mu one prime sigma inverse x minus mu one. This is greater than or equal to log of k. Okay. 
let us call this as 2, this as say 3 or let us further simplify this first. So, if we consider the expansion of these terms, I will get x sigma inverse x minus mu 2 prime sigma inverse x that is 2 times here, which you can also write as uh, this term can also be written as twice x prime sigma inverse mu 2 and then you have plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 2 minus x prime sigma inverse x plus 2 x prime sigma inverse mu 1 plus mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1. So, after expansion these are the terms that I will be getting. You can see that this gets cancelled out and uh, you can adjust the remaining term as x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 <coughs> and you are left with uh, this term here I can again adjust the terms and we can because you are actually getting mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 2 and this is actually becoming minus here minus mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1. So, I can add and subtract the term corresponding to mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1. If I do that then I can factorize and I can write this term as minus half mu 1 plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 this is greater than or equal to log of k. So, this result was actually obtained by uh, Abraham Wald in 1944. This is called actually the discriminant function because this term will be same for uh, all observations, but when you are taking the observation x which you want to classify then this part is actually used for discriminating between the two populations. So, we call this as the discriminant function. So, we have the following result. when we are considering the density function of the form 1 that is multivariate normal distribution, then the best regions of classification are given by if we want to classify an observation x into pi 1 that is n p mu 1 sigma or pi 2 that is n p mu 2 sigma, then the optimal regions of classification they are given by say R 1, where we write x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 minus half mu 1 plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. This is greater than or equal to log of k. This is for the classification into pi 1 and for pi 2 this will become simply less here. Why I am saying these are the optimal regions of classification? Because in the previous lecture I have proved that the minimal complete class is exactly the class of base rules. That means, for looking at good rules we did not look beyond the base rules 
and the base rules are of the form p 1 x by p 2 x greater than or equal to k, where k will be suitably chosen. It is a number between uh, basically uh, it is a ratio q 1 minus q 1 by q 2, but it will depend upon what values of q 1 and q 2 we are choosing. That is why I have written where q, uh, k has to be suitably chosen. In particular, if we consider prior probabilities of pi 1 and pi 2 as q 1 and q 2 respectively. Then k is nothing but q 2 by q 1. If cost function c 1 2 and c 2 1 is used then k is equal to q 2 c 1 given to q 1 c 2 given 1. So, this can be chosen. Uh, in general, k can be anything, but all of the choices will give you a rule in the minimal complete class. That means, it is an admissible rule and it is a base rule. Now, you may take the extreme case when q 1 and q 2 are same. That means, we do not discriminate between the two populations. In case when c 1 2 is equal to c 2 1 and q 1 is equal to q 2, then the region r 1 is simply because k will become uh, 1 and therefore, log of k will become 0. So, this will become x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 is greater than or equal to half times mu 1 plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. Now, there can be a question where a priori probabilities are either not assumed or we simply have no information. That means, we cannot discriminate between two populations on the basis of prior probabilities. In that case, one can look at the uh, that means, we can look at that uh, we make the expected losses due to misclassification as the same. So, let me just mention that point here. If we do not consider prior probabilities then we may choose k in such a way that the two expected losses due to misclassification are equal. That means, I will need the probability of this that is classifying into r, uh, pi 1 when it is belonging to pi 2. That means, under the assumption that x is having n p mu sigma 2 mu 2 sigma and uh, the other one will be that less than this that means, we classify into pi 2, but we assume x to be in pi 1 that means, x is following n p mu 1 sigma. So, that means, we need the probability of this statement le greater than or equal to or less than. So, in order to see that we actually need the distribution of for this we need the distribution 
of so this quantity I denote by u x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 minus half mu 1 plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. under the assumption that x follows n p mu i sigma i is equal to 1 2. Now, <coughs> you can use the linearity property of the uh, multivariate normal distribution here. See if x is following since x is following n p mu i sigma therefore, x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus my mu 2 we can actually obtain uh, due to linearity property of multivariate normal distribution. you will have p. So, basically the dimension will remain the same because this is also. Uh, so, so this will become univariate normal basically because what is happening is x is a multivariate normal. Now, what term you are writing is becoming a, a scalar quantity because this is 1 by p then you are having p by p and then you are having p by 1. So, this is becoming a scalar quantity. So, uh, so this will you will have a, a univariate normal distribution. Now, let us calculate it separately when x follows n p mu 1 sigma then what will be expectation of say u? We will call it expectation 1. Then here it is becoming equal to mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 minus half mu 1 plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. Now, this term we can simplify. Here you look at this is actually becoming uh, mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1 and here I get half mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1. So, this is with a minus sign. So, it will become plus. Similarly, you look at the cross product term that is mu 1 prime. In fact, if you go back to the original term where I derived this from there it will be clear that how this term is coming. Initially, I have written here this term was mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 2 plus minus mu 1 prime sigma inverse mu 1 which is written like this particular term. So, this term is in the plus and this is in the minus here. So, this is minus and then this is getting cancelled out here minus this one. So, half is there. So, it will become plus half. So, then this term can be simplified to which is equal to half mu 1 prime minus mu 2 well sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. Let us put some equation number here. So, this uh, definition of u let me put as say 7 and this I put as say 8 and uh, when in this case what will be the variance of u? For the variance you have the formula that because for x it is sigma. So, it will become mu 1 
माइनस म्यू टू प्राइम सिग्मा इनवर्स देन सिग्मा एंड देन सिग्मा इनवर्स दिस टर्म विल बी कमिंग सो सिग्मा सिग्मा इनवर्स विल कम आइडेंटिटी सो दिस टर्म विल बी रिमेनिंग दैट मीन्स यू विल गेट इट एज म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू प्राइम सिग्मा इनवर्स म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू लेट मी कॉल इट इक्वेशन नंबर नाइन वी ऑल्सो राइट हियर सी दिस पर्टिकुलर टर्म विच इज रिटर्न हियर एक्चुअली दिस इज basically a, a major uh, distance major which was given in 1930 by pc mahlanobis and it is called mahlanobis distance measure or mahlanobis d square this is the mahlanobis distance so this uh, let us call it say uh, delta i square we give this uh, term name as delta i square okay so what we have actually we can write in terms of this here expectation of u1 is basically half of this so this is half delta i square so what we have proved is that we have shown that if x belongs to pi 1 then this u is following normal distribution with mean half delta i square and variance delta i square now consider the other case that is np mu 2 sigma then expectation of u in this case what will happen it will become mu 2 prime here so this will become mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 minus half mu 1 prime plus mu 2 prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 once again this can be simplified here see this is minus mu2 prime sigma inverse mu2 and here i will get plus mu2 prime sigma inverse mu2 so this will get cancelled out and you will get minus and this term is minus so basically you will get minus half of delta i square and similarly if you look at variance that will be same because in the variance that term does not change that is we are saying that if x belongs to pi 2 then the distribution of u is normal with mean <coughs> minus half delta i square and delta i square now you can see this result is very uh, interesting we have used u for basically discriminating between that populations pi 1 and pi 2 and here you can see the clear demarcation the average values of u under pi 1 and pi 2 they are showing opposite behavior like here it is half delta i square and here it is minus half delta i square and delta i square i am giving a name mahlanobis distance measure so if the two populations distance is given in terms of delta i square then clear cut demarcation between the populations pi 1 and pi 2 is coming that means if x actually belongs to pi 1 then the mean of that is half delta i square and in the other case it is becoming minus half delta i square so it is exactly on the opposite side so this is quite interesting and you can think that heuristically it is actually a good classification rule now let us look at the uh, uh, we want to make the uh, two expected probabilities of uh, misclassification to be the same then let us consider this so the probability of misclassification if the observation 
is from pi 1. So, that is p 2 given 1 that is now you classify into 2 if you are getting x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 less than this quantity basically you are saying u is less than c. So, because our original classification rule that I have described here it is in terms of u only. So, basically this term was u. So, u greater than some quantity or u less than some quantity. So, we will use exactly that thing. So, it is probability of u less than c when the true population is say pi 1. Now, under pi 1 we have just now derived that u follows a normal distribution with mean half delta square and variance delta square. So, we can consider we can consider u minus half delta square by delta less than c minus half delta square by delta. So, this is becoming a standard normal random variable. So, this can be written in terms of the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal c minus delta square by 2 divided by delta, where phi denotes the CDF of a standard normal distribution. Similarly, let us calculate the probability of misclassification if the observation is from pi 2. If the observation is from pi 2, then the probability of misclassification is p 1 2. That means, the observation is from 2, but I put it in 1 that is p pi 2 and u is greater than or equal to c. So, that is equal to probability of u when u is from x is from pi 2 then u has normal minus half delta square delta square. So, this will become u greater than well we can put it u plus delta square by 2 by delta greater than or equal to c plus delta square by 2 by delta and again this is having a standard normal distribution. So, this is equal to probability of z where z is a standard normal random variable c plus delta square by 2 divided by delta. So, this is nothing but 1 minus probability of z less than c plus delta square by 2 by delta which is nothing but actually c plus delta square by 2 by delta which we can also write as phi of minus c plus delta square by 2 by delta. So, you can see here we are able to evaluate the two probabilities of misclassification. So, we can choose c such that these two are same. If there is a cost function then we can include that also. Uh, if c 1 2 and c 2 1 are given as costs of misclassification then one can choose this c such that c 1 given 2 p 1 given 2 is equal to c 2 given 1 into p 2 given 1 or c 1 given 2 phi of minus c plus delta square by 2 by delta is equal to c 2 given 1 phi of c minus delta square by 2 by delta. Let me call it equation number 13 here.
Now, this is uh, quite interesting, we are actually able to restrict our attention to a rule for which the two expected probabilities of misclassification are same. Since uh, all the terms in this expression will be known, because delta is uh, based on mu 1, mu 2 and sigma, which is the parameters of the two populations. C 1, 2 and C 2, 1 are the casts of misclassification, which will be some assumed numbers. So, all the terms here are known. That means, from the tables of the normal distribution, that is uh, uh, tables of the cumulative distribution function of the normal distribution, we can actually find a C for which these two values will be or this equation number 13 will be satisfied. So, this is actually minimax classification procedure. minimax classification procedure. That is the C that is equal to log k is chosen so as to satisfy equation number 13. you can look at this C V. See this is the point you have minus delta square by 2 and this is the point plus delta square by 2. So, of course, there will be so this is some 0 here say. So, this is the gray area here and c will be somewhere here. So, maybe c is here or it could be here etcetera. So, we cut off like this actually if the point is here or here then there is no problem, but in this portion we have to decide whether we should put in the population 1 or in the 2. So, depending upon the value of c we, we, which is here or here etcetera depending upon the nature of mu 1 and mu 2 because mu 1 and mu 2 will affect the value of delta square if there is large difference or there is a small difference and also the magnitude of sigma all of this will dif affect the value of. So, it could be that this intersection part is very small and in that case the classification will be good. If the intersection is more then certainly classification rule will be slightly worse that means the discrimination power of the rule will be much less. Uh, if we consider say uh, C 2 1 is equal to C 1 2, then it becomes a much simpler problem. Because if you have C 2 1 is equal to C 1 2, then this equation is reducing to let me write it here. If the cast terms are also same, then 13 becomes the first part will become minus delta by 2 and the right hand part will become uh, sorry uh, if that is so minus um, minus c by delta minus c by delta minus delta by 2 is equal to phi of c by delta minus delta by 2. So, you can see here this will give you c is equal to 0. So, the rule which is written for q 1 is equal to q 2 that means, when we equate the two that is actually coming as the minimax classification procedure. So, if the costs are the same and uh, q 1 is equal to q 2 then whatever rule is obtained that is actually becoming the minimax rule, but if c 1 2 is not equal to c 2 1 then certainly you will find from the tables of the normal distribution.
using the CDF of the standard normal distribution. We can also notice some further fact. If I consider the ratio C 1 2 by C 2 1, then what do we get? C 1 2 by C 2 1. This is equal to phi of C minus delta square by 2 by delta divided by phi of minus C plus delta square by 2 by delta. Let us call it say some G of C. This is G C. So, because if I consider increasing C, then this will decrease, but then it is in the denominator and it is a non negative function. So, this will increase, this is increasing. So, then this is an increasing function, increasing function of C. So, if it is an increasing function, then certainly there exists a value of C for which equality will be attained. So, there exists a value of C say C star such that G of C star is equal to C 1 given 2 by C 2 given 1. That means, the solution will always exist. See both the terms in the expression 3, let me go back to the expression 3 here. That is the original discriminant here x prime sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2 minus half mu 1 plus mu 2 mu sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. So, you look at this, this part and this part is common. If we call it say delta, then basically we are looking at a solution of equation of the form sigma delta is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2. So, we can consider they involve the vector delta is equal to sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. this is obtained as solution of sigma delta is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2. Uh, this is regarding the computational part of this because we certainly need to calculate and then this will involve the inverse here. Actually, this term is not difficult x prime and then mu 1 prime plus mu 2 prime. So, only difficulty is because to evaluate sigma inverse and then of course, then multiplication with something. So, if we look at the solution of uh, this type that means, delta is equal to this. So, if I consider some efficient uh, computational procedure numerical computation procedure, then we can actually obtain this solution. For example, gas Seidel, gas Jordan or any other method because this is basically becoming a system here because I need the solution delta is equal to sigma inverse mu 1 minus mu. So, this can be done using an efficient computational procedure. We have further interpretation of this that <coughs> the discriminant function the discriminant function x prime delta is linear function which is maximizing E 1 x prime d minus e 2 x prime d whole square divided by variance of x prime d 
for all choices of of d in fact if you look at the numerator the numerator here is mu 1 prime d minus mu 2 prime d whole square but this we can also write as mu 1 prime d minus mu 2 prime d and prime of that into mu 1 prime d minus mu 2 prime d. If we write like this then it is becoming d prime mu 1 minus mu 2 mu 1 minus mu 2 prime d. So, we can express this in a different way here and in a similar way if you look at the denominator here <coughs> this uh, variance of uh, x prime d then that is equal to d prime expectation of x minus expectation x x minus expectation x prime d that is actually d prime sigma d. So, basically we can say that we want to maximize 17 with respect to d such that 18 is a constant. So, basically we are considering the term d prime mu 1 minus mu 2 mu 1 minus mu 2 prime d minus lambda times d prime sigma d minus 1. So, this is the Lagrange's multiplier here lambda is actually <coughs> Lagrange's multiplier. So, you can consider derivative of this with respect to d. with respect to d and equating to 0 what we will get mu 1 minus mu 2 into mu 1 minus mu 2 prime d is equal to twice lambda sigma d there will be 2 here also so this 2 will actually cancel out so I do not have to write that thing here and this is actually a scalar. So, we can actually write it as some new that is mu 1 minus mu 2 is equal to lambda by nu this quantity I am calling nu into sigma d. So, you can say that the solution is proportional to delta because delta you see here it was sigma delta is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2 that is the solution here. So, here you can see that solution is proportional to delta. Now, here it is the classification of a single observation x into two populations, but the more general problem of classification is that in place of one observation we may have a sample of observations. If we have a sample of observations in that case we can consider the distribution because of the sufficiency in a multivariate normal situation x bar and uh, s they are the sufficient statistics. So, uh, we can actually consider the distribution of x bar. So, x bar will have n p mu sigma 1 by n and sigma 2 by well mu 1 sigma by n and mu 2 sigma by n. So, the problem has just shifted there in place of sigma we are considering sigma by n and the entire procedure will remain the same. So, let me just mention this thing here in case 
we have random samples random sample say of size say n to classify that is sample is say uh, x1 x2 xn then we can use the sample mean vector and classify into pi 1 that is np mu 1 sigma by n or pi 2 np mu 2 sigma by n. Uh, this is uh, for the purpose because if we are considering this from the first population then the sample mean will have this distribution and if it is from the second one then the sample mean will have this distribution. So, the entire problem is just modified and the procedure will remain the same. Uh, so, this particular problem that I have discussed now it is for the classification when the parameters of the population are known and therefore, the procedure that I described in the previous lecture is completely applicable here. That means, I am able to derive a procedure uh, which can be based that means, we are considering the choices there because the density functions are completely known. Uh, in case the prior probabilities are not assumed, we can find out a minimax choice. I have shown in this particular case that the choice can be explicitly found. Uh, from the tables of the normal distribution. In fact, one particular case we have taken when equality was there in that that means, the C 1 2 and C 2 1 are same then uh, the value of C was actually 0 and that was the minimax classification rule. Uh, but in the real situation generally what will happen that this ideal situation will not prevail that means, you will have the parameters of the two populations unknown if the parameters of the population are unknown in that case we have to proceed with the training samples that means we have samples one sample from the first population and we have the sample from the second population these are called the training samples from those training samples you actually estimate the parameters of those populations and then use them uh, now on the basis of that then there can be several methods of uh, estimation and then uh, one can use that. So, in the following lecture I will discuss this particular problem of classification into two multivariate normal populations when the parameters are unknown. Uh, well, when the parameters are unknown then there can be several situations. The problem that I discussed just now I took the common covariance matrix. Now, there itself the change can occur in place of common covariance matrix one may have sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now, suppose they are known. In that case, the solution that I derived it will not be that simple. For example, let us consider consider the case when sigma 1 is not equal to sigma 2. So, let me take up the uh, first sheet here again where I wrote the density function. In the density function in that case I will get sigma i here and I will get a sigma i here. So, these two terms will play a role earlier I was able to just cancel this term, but this will now come and here also the adjustment of the terms will not come because earlier I cancelled x prime sigma inverse x from both now it will not cancel. So, the rule will become complicated when you write p 1 x by p 2 x. So, the rule will then the rule will not be in a simple form. So, basically it will become let me just attempt a write up here it will become p 1 x by p 2 x. So, that will become equal to sigma 2 by sigma 1 e to the power well half and then you will have x minus 
म्यू टू प्राइम सिग्मा टू इनवर्स एक्स माइनस म्यू टू माइनस एक्स माइनस म्यू वन प्राइम सिग्मा वन इनवर्स एक्स माइनस म्यू वन सो देन वी आर सेइंग इट इज ग्रेटर देन आर इक्वल टू के सो दिस इज द क्लासिफिकेशन प्रोसीजर इन टू आर वन दैट मीन्स यू क्लासीफाई द पॉपुलेशन एंड द ऑब्जर्वेशन एज इन टू पाई वन इफ दिस कंडीशन इज सेटिस्फाइड दैट मीन्स इफ इट इज ग्रेटर देन के नाउ अनलाइक द प्रीवियस केस हियर द टर्म्स कैन नॉट बी कैंसिल्ड एंड वी डोंट हैव वेरी कन्वीनियंट फॉर्म्स एक्चुअली ऑफकोर्स for given sigma 1 and sigma 2 these are some constants i can adjust it to the right hand side okay so i can still say take log here so i can write half x minus mu 2 prime sigma 2 inverse x minus mu 2 minus x minus mu 1 prime sigma 1 inverse x minus mu 1 this is greater than or equal to log of k Plus log of determinant sigma one by determinant of sigma two. So, uh, well, uh, one can look at various cases here, and uh, so this is basically a known constant. Let me put it C. So the form is the same, but it is not simplified in that fashion as we had done in the previous case because these two terms are actually separate because of different sigma two and sigma one. of course if we want to find out the probabilities of misclassification for example what is the distribution of this under uh, say mu uh, pi 1 so if you consider pi 1 then say mean will become mu 1 but here you will actually need to do the calculation because of the linearity is not there in the previous case the best thing was that you got a linear discriminant function the x prime sigma inverse mu1 minus mu2 the second part was free from x here you can see that this term is not cancelling you are getting a quadratic here therefore the distribution theory which is using the fisher cochran theorem etc has to be utilized that means the distribution of uh, this x prime sigma2 inverse this thing will have to be utilized for example if uh, you are considering pi1 then this will become mu1 minus mu2 and so they you will have a non centrality parameter here whereas for this one it will become a central chi square in the reverse case when uh, this is from the first population uh, from the second population then this will become central chi square whereas this will become a non central chi square so this type of distribution theory will come so the results are somewhat more complicated and cannot be described in straight forward fashion but of course it can be done because nowadays computational facilities are available and one can write a routine for actually evaluating the probabilities of misclassification so that you can equate them uh in the next lecture i will discuss the case of unknown parameters in detail